National Security Advisor INEC expressed worry over insecurity. And on the foreign scene, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, elected president of the UAE. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. <music> Now the news in detail. There was tension in some parts of Secretary of State on Saturday as some residents took to the streets to protest the arrest of suspected or suspects involved in the killing of a female student over alleged blasphemy. The protesters wielded placards with inscriptions such as release our Muslim brothers, Muslims are not terrorists, among others. Ahead of the protest, security personnel were stationed at strategic places, including the Sultan of Sokoto's palace. Trouble started after the deceased was said to have made the blasphemous comment on a WhatsApp group where her classmates were. This drew anger of some of her Muslim colleagues who, according to reports, beat her to death. Earlier, President Muhammad Buhari on Friday condemned the killing of Ms. Deborah Samuel in Sokoto State. Samuel, a second-year student of Shehu Shagari College of Education, Sokoto, was killed on Thursday following an allegation that she had blasphemed Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. In a statement by his media aide, Garba Shehu, President Buhari said the news of the killing of the young lady by fellow students was a matter of concern. He therefore demanded an impartial, extensive probe into all that happened before, during, and during the incident. The president stated that Muslims all over the world demand respect for the holy prophets, including Isa, Jesus Christ, and Muhammad. He, however, explained that where transgressions occur, as alleged to be the case in this instance, the law does not allow anyone to take matters into their hands. Similarly, Vice President Yemil Shibaja has condemned the killing of Deborah Samuel, noting that as there are processes to address wrongs. Speaking in Abuja on Friday, Oshibajo said he was deeply distressed by what happened in Secretary of State. Oshibajo, who described the incident as deeply distressing and regrettable, regretted why the mob took the laws into their hands. He condemned he commended the swift action of the Secretary of State government and also the Sultan of Sokoto uh, is highly commendable and called for calm for all parties involved. The President has reacted to that statement which was issued earlier, condemning the action, you know, and um, but I must say that it's a deeply distressing thing, very disturbing that um, such uh, an atrocious killing of a uh, young lady uh, by mob, you know, who, you know, by mob who uh, took the law into their own hands. I think it's very unfortunate indeed. And, but I'm very happy that of the very, about the very swift reaction of the uh, Sokoto state government and also the Sultan of Sokoto. I think this their swift reaction to the situation clearly demonstrated the outrage of millions of, of, of Nigerians and also uh, demonstrated uh, the uh, desire, the desire of everyone to ensure that the, uh, the perpetrators are quickly apprehended and prosecuted. As the president said, there is really no excuse for, uh, for anyone to take the law into their own hands, no matter the provocation. There are set processes for ensuring that we are able to redress whatever, you know, our wrongs uh, that are done against us. But uh, lastly, I think we must um, uh, express our condolence to the family of uh, the young lady, uh, Deborah Samuel. Uh, I can't imagine how her parents and her siblings and members of her family feel, not just about the, her death, but the very horrendous nature of its occurrence. I think it's very sad indeed, and we express our sincere condolences to them. Our hearts are with them, and we ask that the Almighty God will comfort them at this time. Yeah. Prayers by religious clerics and other citizens can contribute to surmounting the problems of the nation. Pastor and General Overseer of Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lagos, Pastor Enoch Adeboe, stated this during his visit to Nasarawa State Governor in Lafia. 
The Christian cleric said Nigerian problems are not religious but political, adding that if attention is given to prayers, God will intervene. Pastor Adeboe said this uh, decision to ground around some states was to support the efforts of leaders through prayers as the work towards finding lasting solution to the nation's challenges. Nasarawa State Governor Abdullahi Sile, while responding to corroborated the Christian cleric's position, the efficacy of prayers, and commended him for embarking on the prayer tour. For political reasons. I try to make them understand that when the bandits were shooting at the people in the train that they were laid on the way to Kaduna, they didn't have a special bullet for Christians and another kind of bullets for Muslims. They were shooting. And bullets kill anyone. Bullets will not ask, what is your religion? So I said, we have a problem that only God can help us to solve. So these things that are happening, like you truly mentioned, are not religious. They are purely political. And it is only God that will touch the hearts of the people who are causing these problems, that will make an 80-year-old to travel to life here for the first time in the history of his life, mm. and now to travel to all these other places to pray for our country. So we need those prayers today. We need those prayers in every state of the Federation. We need those prayers for our Mr. President, for our country, and the young people. You have nothing else at the age of 80. You are not looking for anything else. So that's why it is touchy and emotional. For you, you don't need anything. yet. You are going around the country, praying for the country so that we can have peace. May the Almighty Allah continue to bless you, to guide you, to guide you, to give you good health so you can live another 80 years. Amen. The Northern Consensus Movement has expressed displeasure over the assumption that most bandits and kidnap-related offences are perpetrated by men of Fulani extraction. President of the movement, Awal Aliyu, made this known at a press briefing in Abuja to address the misconceptions often held against the Fulanis. Aliyu explained that it is unacceptable for the Fulanis to be profiled based on the misdeeds of a few bad eggs, adding that many of them have also fallen victim to the atrocities of the criminals. Ali Makota, who was until Friday the chief of staff to Governor Abdullah Higanduje of Keno State, has dumped the All Progressives Congress for the new Nigerian People's Party. He confirmed this to Daily Trust via a text message on Saturday. Meanwhile, Senator Ibrahim Shekaro of Keno State has shown an invitation to resolve the crisis between him and Ganduje. The meeting, according to sources familiar with the development, was discovered to be organized by the national chairman of APC, Abdullahi Adamu, and some APC governors. This development, it was gathered, proved to Shekaro that there was no sincerity in the reconciliation process and led him to shelve the plan to attend. Still talking politics, presidential aspirant of the People's Democratic Party and former Vice President Atiku Abubakar says placing value on education, unity and tackling insecurity should be a priority to any government. He stated this when he met with delegates of the party in Asaba, Delta State. The former Vice President, who noted that Nigeria needs to take back its pride of place as the giant of Africa, explained that this can only be done if proper attention is given to accountability, security, transparency in governance, as well as dedication to the ideals of nationhood. On his part, the Delta State Governor, Ifanyo Okoa, says the PDP has all it takes to energ emerge victorious in 2023 and guarantee the return of Nigeria to greatness. ourselves in 1999. So that's why I identified unity as number one. Every part of this country is rooted in one form of insecurity or the other. And I said we are going to tackle insecurity. Then we face the economy. It is only when you tackle this unity, 
and security that you will be able to face the economy. Today, our universities have been closed for only goes nowhere. This is simply because we have a federal government that is insensitive to the education of our young men and women who are the future of this country. As we approach the elections, we know the state of this nation. And when the PDP took over the governance, we knew what that first team of the PDP, we knew what it took them to put Nigeria back on track. And we are aware of the success stories. We talked about unity, which is still very key and even more important as of today's politics. You talked about the economy. We knew what it was and where it would took us to. We knew the debt situation then. Now it's even worse. It's only men with a lot of experience that can truly deal with that. National leader of the All Progressives Congress, Asiwaju Bola Tinubu, says he remains the best of all the aspirants for the nation's presidency. Tinubu said this when he met with delegates in Niger State ahead of the party's presidential primaries. Tinubu said, unlike the other aspirants, he has produced many other leaders who uh, are doing well on their own. He said he will replicate the development strides witnessed in Lagos if he becomes the nation's number one man. The main thing is that the only person you should follow is the person who knows the road and your destination, your strength, your happiness, and good health. watching Trust News update coming up after the break. Road users decry accidents due to dilapidation. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. You heard that Sokoto Youth's protest call for release of those arrested by police over killing of Deborah Samuel. 
We also heard that Ganduja's chief of staff joins NNPP as Shekaro Shan's move to resolve Keno APC crisis. Moving on to more news, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Munguno, retired, has expressed worry over what he termed growing uncertainty over party primaries ahead of the 2023 general elections. The NSA noted the development has already culminated in intense power play capable of heightening unnecessary political tension across the country. Munguno, who spoke at the quarterly meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security at the INEC headquarters in Abuja, said heads of security agencies have been mandated to monitor and profile political actors who are bent on subverting the electoral process. The National Security Advisor was represented by Sanusi Galadima. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu and joint security agencies to expedite actions on degrading the security threat before the general elections. Utmost concern, the growing uncertainty heralding the conduct of party primaries for 2023 elections. This is in addition to the unabated spate of violence that threaten the upcoming upcycle gubernatorial elections in HT and Oshun states. More worrisome is the unguarded utterances of some highly respected individuals and groups, which more often than not amplifies divisive narratives to the detriment of national security and stability. Accordingly, head of security and law enforcement agencies have been tasked to step up close monitoring and profiling of political actors, no matter highly placed who exhibit tendencies that subvert the electoral process, even as talks and other sponsors will equally be trained for possible arrest and prosecution. The general security situation in the country and its impact on the electoral process is a source of concern to the Commission. However, we are confident that with nine months to the 2023 general election, there is enough time to respond to the security challenges and secure the nation for elections to take place nationwide. The timetable for the election has been released. Let us not wait until a few weeks to the election before we realize that time is not on our side and begin to seek for extension of timelines. The Katsana Kano Road was constructed for over a century ago. Since then, it has never been rehabilitated in spite of its dilapidated nature. Motorists plying the road had their hopes raised upon commencement of rehabilitation and dualization of the about 200-kilometer road sometime in 2014. The contract, which was awarded with work starting from the Keno end of the road, is being supervised by the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. Abdullahi Amadi takes a look at the current state of the road project and now reports. The Katana to Kano Road is one of the major federal roads linking Katana with the rest of the country. This makes it an important contributor to the socio-economic development of not just the two states, but northern Nigeria as a whole. Beyond Nigeria, this road is one of the major routes to other African countries such as Niger, Algeria, Libya, Mali, and Mauritania, among others. From Sanyawa in Kano State to Katana, the proposed terminal point of the road the construction firm has done little or nothing so far to complete the project. The road is very bad. See, I have a flat tire due to potholes. It is really pathetic. We will be happy if this road is completed, but unfortunately it has been abandoned. The construction firm is alleged to have abandoned the road for a month now as work has totally come to a standstill with staff out of sight at both ends of the road. Accidents along this road are daily occurrences as several lives and property worth hundreds of millions of naira are lost 
to crashes. I don't know why the road project was abandoned. Some people say the construction firm had a disagreement with the government over compensation. Whatever it is, we are appealing to the federal government to come to our aid and complete the project before the expiration of the tenure of President Muhammad Buhari in 2023. Road users are questioning the capacity of the contractor to deliver on the job following what they term sudden disappearance of workers, a situation they said has compounded their woes on the road. But yet, the road is not complete. There are some places which they start working and uh, they even uh, carry even their uh, equipment. We don't know where they are located again. During its public outcry on the state of the road recently, the Kazma Elders Forum threatened to report the matter to President Muhammad Buhari if nothing is done by the construction company. We are awaiting the minister's response because I'm sure he must have received our message. If we are giving him time, if by, say, next month we don't hear anything from him, then we'll go back to Mr. President and report him because he's supposed to finish this job. The money is there. I don't know why Katsina Kano Road, uh, Mr. President's state, and the minister is uh, joking with the, uh, the, constru the, the, the construction. Observers say if by the end of the tenure of the Muhammad Buhari led federal government, the Katsuna Kano Road is not completed, Katsuna people will be left with no option than to feel abandoned and marginalized. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Katsuna. A non-governmental organization, Legislative Initiative for Sustainable Development, has organized a two-day training for journalists and members of civil society groups on accountability and good governance. The workshop centered on strengthening accountability on basic health care provision fund in Gombe State. Ibrahim Ismail has details. The training organized by Legislative Initiative for Sustainable Development and the Ministry of Health in Gombe State will help journalists and members of civil society groups track records and monitor the implementation of health programs under the Basic Health Care Provision Fund, BHCPF, in the state. So there was a recommendation for possible capacity building for CSO Media Coalition in Gombe because of the identify capacity gap. So that was one of the key things that informed the, this capacity building uh, workshop. Then um, another thing that informed this is because of the plan we've had to work with government to improve awareness and accountability around implementation of basic healthcare provision fund. So these are the key major uh, factors that informed it. Representative of civil society organizations said the training will improve advocacy techniques and accountability in the health sector. Services in our dear state, and at the end of this training, we believe we are going to develop a, a, a accountability framework that will be used by both CSO and media in making government accountable for their actions and making sure that our funds that are released by various MDAs reach the end users at our communities. Some participants shared their experience after the training. The way we are going to enlighten the people to know about various services of uh, family health family health care and BHCF initiative for the federal government and the state government. I want to enlighten people to know that um, if they have the ailments except for referral or an emergency um, ailments that needs emergency they should go to the nearest facility because most people die even before getting to the tertiary institution. Uh, not only take home uh, with so much challenges uh, for me as a, as a reporter, at least to help uh, the community, the society have access to basic health uh, uh, service. Stakeholders at the participant who comprise journalists and members of civil society organizations to put the acquired knowledge into practice to facilitate effective advocacy towards optimization of service delivery in the health sector in Gombe State. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV.
and finally away from Nigeria, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed El Nahyan will be the next president of the UAE, the Federal Supreme Council announced on a Saturday. The 61-year-old leader will be the country's third president, succeeding his brother Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, who passed away on May 13th at the age of 73. According to a WAM statement, the Federal Supreme Council convened at Al Mushrif Palace in Abu Dhabi and unanimously elected Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed as the UAE president. The new president is set to hold office for a five-year term before being eligible for re-election. The meeting was chaired by Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of UAE and ruler of Dubai, and attended by UAE rulers. And with this, we've come to the end of news update on Trust TV. For more news, connect with us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.